The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hey there, Nashua, New Hampshire. The Happiness Jungle is brought to you with the Chief Happiness Officer, Lindy Eldridge. I am so excited to bring you some really great women today. The happiness goes on within the body and the soul. That's what I'm talking about, ladies, huh? Yes. Absolutely. I, am so, I, I cannot be more delighted to introduce to everybody Mrs. Devin Pret. And she is with, what is the name of you? I want to make sure that we say it right. Devon's Wholesome Menus. Devon's Wholesome Menus, where she literally helps us eat healthier and happier, huh? And not starve. Yep. How about that? Yep. And you've got some really great health tips behind all of that, don't you? Absolutely. And it was all personal experience as yep. well. So I'm excited to share that with the audience. And then we have over here, I'm so excited. We have just met about five minutes ago. So let's love it. Yes. And you're a life coach. I am. And you bring inspiration and abundance. I do. And you're on Facebook.com forward slash abundance. That's right. I love that. <laughs> so how I'm excited am I to go ahead and share this next 30 minutes with both of you. Thank you very much for Thank coming you. on the show. You ready to get started? Absolutely. So this morning, you know, I start posting away that we're doing this show, and I'm so excited to have you both on it. And the support that you have behind you is just <laughs> fabulous. Your husband was posting it all over Facebook. My <laughs> wife is a rock star. And you know what? He's right. You are a rock star. And other rock stars know other rock stars. So together, we're going to really share with people, not that happiness is a hokey pokey, and we have to work on it, mm -hmm. but there's a choice. You could either eat a raw banana or eat it right. Isn't that correct? <laughs> so share with me, Devin, we met in a networking event. Mm -hmm. And I love to tell people that because the more you get out, the more you're going to meet new people to be able to bring you to your happy place and what you want to do in life. It's just that simple. Absolutely. So we met at a networking event, and mm -hmm. here we are today. And you inspired me so much because you shared with me, which you didn't have to share with me, a lot of challenges that you've been going through mm -hmm. and have gone through. Your support system is 100% yeah. fantastic. Yep. But you also had to change the way you eat. Mm -hmm. And boom, yep. there was your new entity born just because of life experiences. Share with us exactly what brought you to this happy place of what you do for a living that you absolutely love to help people's lives change? So about 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with a degenerative spinal condition. And um, things started kind of going pretty downhill quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of pain, a lot, um, lot of surgeries. I've had eight levels of my spine fused with hardware. I have three titanium rods in my hip. <gasps> Um, I've been on every medication you can imagine and had all sorts of, you know, really painful procedures done. And through all of that, I was, you know, very trusting of, of you know, the medical profession and went, you know, about as far down that road as you can go. Oh. And um, always had a pretty good attitude, but I felt uh, like something was missing. There was a piece missing, something that I wasn't getting. Hmm. Um, I started to look into the nutrition aspect of the physical body and the effects of lack of certain nutrients and how that affects your body and causes deficiencies and causes, you know, physical unwellness. And I took that to heart and took that into my own diet and started making some changes and immediately saw results. Um, I, one of my surgeries had, um, hit my spinal cord. The doctor had hit my spinal cord and I woke up from that paralyzed in my right leg. Oh my goodness. And, uh, you know, they wanted me to move into a rehabilitation center and I, you know, 
said, I have a family. I can't just leave, you know. So I, I went home and I had to relearn how to walk, um, you know, with the help of a, an amazing physical therapist who came to my home every day. And, uh, you know, just making the small dietary changes in the beginning really kind of gave me that glimpse into the kind of empowerment that I could have um, if I really kind of delved into it deeper. And so I did. Um, wow. And, uh, you know, I have, I'm up and about. I have um, almost full feeling in that, in that right leg again um, through diet and supplements and um, a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, uh, you know, I, I lead a very normal life. You know, I've, I've been told by every doctor I've seen in the last five years to go home and wait to be crippled. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, huh. that, that doesn't really jive with my, you know, my plan. Um, it doesn't feel like truth to me, so I kind of, you know, respectfully thank them for their opinion and then kind of go home and keep working on me. And kind of tapping into all of that has um, given me this gift of knowledge that I just really want to share with other people. Um, to have that empowerment, you know, back when you feel like you have no control um, over your own health or over the things that are happening to your body, um, it can really put you in a dark place. And when you start to realize that you have more control over things than you think you do, mm. um, that empowerment can really lift you um, into a better place, you know. That's incredible. So what I just heard was that instead of picking up the Oreo cookies because we're sad, we're depressed, we were told that we were going to be crippled for the rest of our lives, we said, uh, thanks for your opinion, but it doesn't even matter. Right. And the birth of Devin's Wholesome Menus. Menus .com was born. Yep. And you're here with us today because you're living proof that your theory works. That's my, that's my belief, yeah. I like that. Yeah. And I love how you turned a horrific health situation around. That's fantastic. How do you know this wonderful lady? This is my very dear friend, Celeste, and uh, we met through a mutual friend, um, Kim, who has a wellness center, an alternative wellness center in Meredith, New Hampshire. And, uh, you know, Celeste was doing Hi, some... Hi, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Grace. Um, and uh, um, Celeste came to a book club that I was doing for inspirational books. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, she's been, you know, a part of my life ever since. And I've just always really appreciated and connected with her you know, positive attitude and um, and depth. Do you have a Do you have a published um, cookbook? <clears throat> I do not currently. But your website is just loaded with some yumminess. I have a lot of good pictures on there. the uh, The recipes come with the packages that you can order on the website. I like that. Um, as well as nutritional counseling, and the the uh, the menus and uh, grocery lists. As and well. the grocery. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that the truth right there? A happy shopper has a grocery list. Isn't that? My goal is to take all the, the, the work out of it for you so you can that do Make the fun it part. simple. Yeah. yeah. Because truthfully, in people's busy lives, mm -hmm. even if they're not busy, they think they're busy, yep. they're too busy to create that grocery list. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the easy... Uh, the easy recipe that goes along right. with that grocery list. So you're valuable in, in my life. I can't wait to go to your site. Mm -hmm. oh, Celeste, all I heard about from Devin was you're fabulous. You change people's <laughs> lives. You're inspirational. And I need to get you here before you get on go on vacation. <laughs> so I am so excited that you're able to join us today. Well, Share you. with us, how long have you been a life coach? <clears throat> and what is it exactly that you love people because there's many life coaches out there. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure that we're all here at this round table giving the best strength forward. Yes. Well, I, I've been a life coach, I think it's about three, four years, three or four years now. And the way it started for me was um, I, I started a little group in my daughter's living room called Abundance. I, it was a six-week session. And it came out of a situation where a friend of mine had a really great opportunity to travel somewhere. And I went to support this person at uh, their yard sale. 
and gave them $20 for a little trinket or something. I said, I really support you. I really support you going on this trip. And the person said, well, I don't even know where my passport is, and, and I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to afford this. And I was like, huh, I don't think this person's going on that trip. And I, at that point, put together this class because it's important to learn that it's your thought process about something that is whether or not it's going to happen or not. So here that opportunity was right there, as is my opportunity that I'm going on a trip next week with my 93-year-old father and several other older people. And that opportunity came up one day, and I took it. And, but quite often, it's our own inner language that tells us we can't do it. It's not going to work. So I put together this little class, and I started out with six abundancers, is what I call them, and, um, and just tried out some different techniques of things that you could do to raise your vibration is really what you're doing. And that's what I teach people, is to pay attention to your vibration. And for me, I, I scale it from 1 to 100. And, um, and people will go, well, how am I supposed to know what my vibration is? And, I, and if you just answer it, you can usually tell. Mm -hmm. And my vibration normally is about 85. Now, if your vibration is 85 out of 100, what's your day like? Well, you find interesting things to look at as you're driving. People are nice to you in the store. You find parking spaces where you want to go. And, you know, basically life is pretty good right. at 85. But say your vibration, and I've used as an example before, after my mother died, when I first started noticing my vibration, my vibration was at 20 for quite a while. And it's like, hmm, when am I going to come out of this? Well, I was going through a process. I was going through a grieving process. Mm -hmm. So you can't expect everything to be great, although I'll bet other people didn't even notice what it was that I was feeling. But that's how I felt, just moving through my day. So I tried to, I did develop a, um, a system to help people pay attention to their vibration. First of all, what is it? What is it? And what is it when it goes up about five points? And, um, and then teach them to stay on that higher place so that more good things can happen to them. And it doesn't mean you won't still have things. People's washing machines break down. Their cars right. break down. People get divorced. People die. Things happen. But if you've taught yourself, if you've built that muscle to have your vibration be higher, that you're living a happy life, that you're living a joy-filled life and paying attention to it, then more joy is going to come into your life. It's just the natural law of things that that's what's going to happen to you. So that's what I do. Well, I appreciate that. The law of attraction is so powerful. And exactly what you said, if you allow something to hold you back, it's going to hold you back. But if you allow something to say, wait a second, you know what, you're right. That doesn't look right. We need to go this way. And just because of your mindset and your willingness for everything to be okay, you're at an 85 versus that 5. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I adore that. What, what age group do you mostly deal with? Because it's funny, there are older... And when I say older, I mean like older, like 25 and up, you know, because we all are children and, and that's when we're learning how to deal with, with what we have to deal with, the choices of life and what have you. But what, what is your platform? Well, I'll work with people of all ages, but I have had, it's been interesting, some of the, the challenges. The first thing that I do when I do my, my class is I show up a picture of myself at a little over two years old. And I look so happy. And I was so free back then. You know, we are really free. You know, a little child can fall flat on their face and still get up and walk around. We fall flat on our face. We talk about it for a really long time, <laughs> you know. Oh, <laughs> and, oh, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Tell that story. That's not good for your vibration to tell that story. Tell it to the people that are closest to you. We all have to have people that we talk right. to. Mm -hmm. But don't keep telling it. That's don't right. put it all over Facebook. You know, just... Um, you know, take it and move it, move through it. But children are naturally very, mm. their vibration is very mm. high. They're very willing to try something else. And, and, um, and so um, I haven't worked with children, although I do have some ideas for working with children. But when I work with teenagers, I find that they have more to teach me than I have to teach them. Because many of them now in our society are really being brought up to be able to pay attention to their vibration. Wow. And it was, it's pretty interesting. So I have to be really careful that I'm not just giving, you know, old sage advice to a teenager. <laughs> right. Because maybe they have more than what I have. 
What do you think turned that around? Because you, what you've just said is that there's been a shift. I think there is a shift. And, and what is causing that shift? Is it the social media? Is it, share with me, because sometimes there's a lot of meat and bones that goes into that. Well, I think that in general, we're shifting on this planet. And um, I think uh, children have, not all children, we still have plenty of things that we need to fix, but children are encouraged to be themselves. And if you go back to my generation, were we really encouraged to be ourselves? I'm not oh. sure. I actually think, um, in working with people my own age, that it was about the third grade that you really start to be shut down. You know, that everybody is supposed to be the same, and you get right. into the grades. And so I think what we're doing um, as adults is taking off some of those layers to get back to who we really are. Right. Um, I know that at 40, I didn't have any idea really who I was. Everything that I did was in taking care of my family. Everything. Mm -hmm. And I had to kind of learn, who am I? Well, at my age now, I'm like, I say that 60 is the new 20. You have your own money. You have your own time, your own space. You can do what you want. And I'm like, it's a really good time of your life if you choose to have it that right. way. And I do. It's fun. It's playful. Yeah. And Devin, now, and I'm going to piggyback on, on this, okay? Yeah. I'm a grandmother of four. Mm. It is the most fun time of my life. I am going to be 56. And I am telling you, I could not agree with you more. 56 is the new 20. It's yeah. the new 29, because that was my favorite age, uh, the 29. But with me being 56 and even thinking that I'm 29, my meals are very important to me. <laughs> I was just picking up on the fact of um, Celeste talking about the shift. I feel it in the nutrition and health world as well. It's so, um, it has such a, a, an energy to it. Mm -hmm. um, people are ready. People are ready to, yeah. to have a new way. And, um, you know, they've seen what traditional medical, you know, roots have to offer. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a place for that. There's definitely a place for that. Um, if you break your leg, you know, chances are you're going to want to go and get that set and, and right. taken care of. Um, I think people are really shifting into a more natural, um, holistic way of thinking. I hope so because there's really so much open. artificial out mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. whether it's the preservatives that we're eating or whether it's the preservatives that we're injecting in our own bodies and skins. Absolutely. Uh, just to be, oh, look, it's mom. <laughs> you see, you just never go. It's, it's true. Okay, mom. I'm sure she's okay. Um, but it, it's, to me, what's the most important thing is we have to stop injecting and we have to start digesting mm -hmm. mindset, wholesomeness, mm -hmm. everything in conjunction. That's what's going to bring you to the happier plateau. I do, I've been in the cosmetology field for over 30 years. I used to own my own salon, spa. Hey, I don't want to look like I'm 56 or 60, but I also don't want to look like I'm 20 either. Right. And I want that happy balance. Mm -hmm. I don't want to inject myself either. Mm -hmm. And now the new injection is cement. Mm. Did you hear that? No. Yeah. For what? <laughs> Botox. They're injecting cement. So now it's completely, so it, who, who are people today? And you know why they're not happy? Because they're not transparent anymore. Mm -hmm. They're not transparent. They don't understand how to eat right to keep them in the youth. They don't understand how to drink more water. They don't understand because everybody is so, so busy. And here's what I want to touch, because for children that are going off to school, mm -hmm. to the adults that are leaving the house early as well, what do they pack? For the healthy snacks. Why are the kids going with yodels and Twinkies and potato chips? What's the healthy balance that they're going to enjoy thinking that they're eating the yodels and the potato chips? What's the 56-year-old that's a, that's a dessertaholic want to eat when she's addicted to the yodels and the potato chips? Well, and people often ask me if I can, you know, provide that kind of convenience of prepackaged foods and mm -hmm. Um, drive throughs and, and my answer is no. Good for you. Absolutely That's not. That's lazy. Um, you have to make yourself a priority. You have to love yourself with food. We've gotten to the point now where we have almost become self-abusive 
with the food choices that we make, right. with our, you know, our schedules even. I just feel like um, we're not respecting our own boundaries. We're, we're using things um, to hurt ourselves yeah. instead of love ourselves. And that's basically, I, I tell people almost nothing about what I do is about food. It's not about food. It's about how you feel about yourself. And if you feel like you're valuable and lovable and worth caring for, right. then you will automatically do things and eat things and drink things and you know, go places that make you feel good, um, that care for you, that care for your soul, care for your body. Um, it's an automatic response. So when I tap into some, when I do a consultation and tap into, um, that's one of the first things I tap into is how that person actually feels about themselves. And it's pretty easy to see based on what they eat. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, the choice is almost taken out for you right. once you respect and love yourself enough to to really use your food to just to love yourself. Yeah, it's beautiful. That was beautiful. Oh, thank that you. Was absolutely beautiful. Yes, it, it was mindful. And I'm going to go one step further. I enjoy. I enjoy eating like a good kale salad, mm -hmm. but I don't have time to prepare the kale. I don't. And now they came out with a solution for me, and it's this little kale package. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it in the grocery stores? The little baby kale in a bag? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh-oh. She's looking at me <laughs> smiling. But to me, I'm thinking kale, kale mix, quick and easy. That's way better than that McDonald's hamburger. But you're looking at me like there's a nutritional thing here. No, nope, is not at how all. How do you feel I'm, about the prepackaged, like the salads for the people that are so in, in a quick and go? They just need the to tear and wash and, and eat. So everything I do is about meeting you where you are. Uh huh. So if your option before was a burger from a drive-through, right? If you're making the effort and to, that's not to mine, get no, a I'm just using it. sure. Um, if you're making a choice that's better right. than the one that you were making before, my family, friends, everyone who knows me knows that my motto is better is better. So if you're making a choice that's better than the one you would have made, give yourself a huge pat on the back, right? Because you're already treating yourself better than you were before. I want to stop right there. What you just said was the key of all keys. Mm -hmm. Be very content with what you have done, not with what you haven't done. Yep. Yeah, it inspires you to do more when you congratulate yourself and you you know give yourself right. those pats on the back. It automatically makes you want to do more of that because right. it feels good. Yeah, don't be don't be so hard on yourself that you cheated mm -hmm. and that you had a bag of the little chips. Uh -uh. Be excited that you changed the burger to the kale. Right, right. I, I wish I could jump up and down, but I can't <laughs> move the table. That's that's wonderful. And then the mindset and the power to change. Mm. Well, it is. And, and I, I hear a lot, um, particularly women will say, oh, I was bad today. I ate such and such. And I'm like, you're not bad for what you eat. You're not right. bad or good. Oh, I was really good. I didn't eat that piece of birthday cake. Why? That doesn't make you a good person. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with bad right. or good. With these labels that we weigh ourselves down yeah. with and... You're convincing yourself that you're a certain way. It's really, I really love that about loving yourself because it's really all about loving yourself. And maybe we need to relearn how to do that and build that muscle of loving ourselves. But if whether it's what you eat or what time you go to bed or whether you take a walk outside or whatever it is that mm -hmm. you do, if you're doing things that you're loving yourself and building that muscle for yourself, you're going to be a happier person. It's okay to be happy. Mm -hmm. it re it's, it's really all right to be happy. That's right. It, nobody should feel that, oh, my God, I'm not supposed to smile because nobody in the room is smiling or laughing or, or what have you. Maybe so I'm not working hard enough. or you know, No, you don't need to do that. Right. You can take the time that you really need for yourself that we all need for ourselves. Yeah. And because of social media today, there are so many ways that people can connect to like-minded people, that they don't have to keep talking to the same people that are making them feel less of, or just like staying where they are. Mm -hmm. There are so many different ways because we all have excuses why we can't. But yet there's this, there's this platform called meetup.com. Mm -hmm. I speak about it often. 
I really wish I owned it. I speak about it so often. <laughs> But what it does is it gives people that channel to meet new like-minded people. And they even have social media meetups mm -hmm. where if you can't get to the place, you know, in your area, then there's, there's always a reason, there's always a path to what it is that you want to accomplish. But if you stay a couch potato, you're going to start, what is it, those little sprouts? <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy to me. So in closing, first of all, let's share with the audience how they get in touch with you. Well, Share. I do have a, a Facebook page called Abundance. I also have one called 40 Days to 40 Days to uh, Spiritual Practice, something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I can't even, I should have had that written down. But also, just Celeste Lovett on Facebook. People can feel free to contact me if they would like to talk to me. Um, I do classes out of Grace Wellness in uh, Meredith, and um, I'm more than happy to connect with anybody who's interested in what I'm doing. I love it. Devin, share with them how they could get a hold of you. Uh, you can go on my website, which is devinswholesomemenus.com. Um, my email is devinswholesomemenus at gmail.com. Um, I do have a Facebook page as well, just my, my personal page. Um, I try to share some, some good energy and some good vibes through that. Um, I know Celeste does as well. and um, So Devin Pratt. Um, I love it. And you girls don't try. You <laughs> and I'm excited because there's a reason that just last week we met. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited because this holds a whole new beginning because like-minded people stick together. So the Happiness Jungle is so excited about this episode with these two absolutely amazing ladies to help you change your lives for the better so you can live a healthier, happier life. So you understand how not to stay in a place where society is telling you to stay. I am Lindy Eldridge. I am the Chief Happiness Officer. I do help people out of their rot, not because life is easy, but because you can be happier. So just filling ourselves with a healthier inner and the core to be able to be whatever we want to be and never be stuck, but to also always be childlike. Mm. I want us to do something very, very quick. I want you all to enjoy something from the treasure chest, please, because here is where you get to constantly live a childlike life. <laughs> Thank you. So on your way home, I want you to enjoy your little toys because it really is all about keeping the childlike within us and not allowing the adults to steal our time. <laughs> How powerful is that? Ladies, thank you so much. Last tip for everybody within two seconds. Word of advice. Live a joy-filled life. Make sure that everything you're eating, you're sending yourself a message of love with it. Amen, everybody. Live for tomorrow. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.